politics. Now, we've heard plenty in recent months about the coalition's plans to push through the sharpest public spending cuts since the end of the Second World War as ministers tackled Britain's debt mountain. In case you've lost sight of what's at the centre of the debate, here's a, a reminder of details in this year's budget. The UK government will spend about £710 billion in 2011 2012. The budgets for health, education and defence make up less than half total expenditure. By far the biggest outlay is on the euphemistically named social protection. It's nothing to do with security but covers welfare payments and public sector pensions at a cost of £200 billion. The idea is to bring down the national debt, which costs us £50 billion a year in interest alone. Now, of course, among many recipients of government spending, some services are regarded as essential, as these pictures show. Many anti-cuts protesters feel passionately about protecting services. Things can sometimes get out of hand. But not everyone is happy to pay for public spending on such a scale. This Saturday there is going to be a demonstration not only in favour of the cuts but also calling on the government to go even further. Well, joining me now is a supporter of the Rally Against Debt, the filmmaker Martin Durkin. Martin, thanks for coming in. Nice to see you. Cheers, you yeah. want less government spending. What should be cut? Well, I mean, what a lovely question. The BBC, that could go, Department of Trade and Industry or whatever that's called now. I mean, just gazoodles of stuff. The idea that if you make a cut, this it will be a cut of what they call frontline services is complete tosh. There are about seven million people on the public payroll at the moment, of whom less than two million are categorised as uh, or do jobs that we would usually regard as frontline services. There are vast scope for cuts. But more than that, if you have a private company and you're making huge losses, you have to make cuts. You don't think, oh, well, we would make cuts, but I just can't see where we'd start. You just have to make cuts. And that's what it has to be in the public sector, too. They have to make cuts. So for a mature democracy like Britain, how much should the government spend each year? It's currently spending £700 billion. Well, I think it should be spending uh, uh, vastly less than it is spending. It's spending about, about half of the national income at the moment, I think. Yes, 50% of GDP. To, I'd love to live in a, uh, 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 the UK spending 25% of GDP. I think that would be a far better country to live in. Well, if it did that, it would be spending only... It would be spending something like uh, £350 billion a year. So you're talking about £300 billion of cuts. It sounds good. It's slightly uh, e emotive, but what... What goes? I mean, I you talk about all these gazillions. Vast swathes of uh, Who would you sack? I would sack almost everyone on the public payroll. I would, I would, I mean, personally, I would privatise the... I mean, if we're talking about the services that people hold dear, I would privatise the NHS. Well, I would privatise education. The, 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 the one thing about that, the problem with that is that if you sack them, you don't actually get rid of the government expenditure because it moves elsewhere. So let's, for instance, let's have a look at education, 89 billion. If you sacked a lot of the teachers or people who work in education, the expenditure would move to this box up here called social protection, which is welfare payments, and that's kind of destructive, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's, if you have pointless jobs, and you have vast numbers of pointless jobs in the public sector, the idea that keeping them is in, in any way constructive is complete lunacy. Employing people to do non-jobs is not beneficial to economic growth. Public spending comes out of the productive economy. The more public spending you have, then the less profitable the productive economy is, the less it will grow, the poorer we will be. If we have, you know, if, if having a gigantic public sector was good for the economy, then communist Poland would still be a going concern. The northeast of England, that is, uh, and, and, and regions like that that benefit from huge amounts of, uh, well, I don't know whether they benefit from, but they get huge amounts of public money, they, it does not encourage economic growth there. there Keeping people in rubbish jobs is not good for the economy. There isn't just a clear red line, though, is there, between the private and public sectors? Because, of course, uh, the public sector generates lots of spending for private companies that supply it. I, I think that's complete tosh. Um, uh, this well, is it's what, not tosh, is it? It's yes, absolutely it is. true. Because private where does private the money, suppliers where do does the supply the public sector. Where does the money come from to pay those private suppliers but the private sector? It comes from the productive economy. If you have the DTI building themselves a shiny new building, they say, look at what we're doing. We're employing private contractors to do that. Where is the money coming from to pay the private contractors? It's coming from the productive economy. I mean, sucking money out of the productive economy and then sp spilling rather a lot and then and pumping some back in 
does not stimulate the economy. It's like uh, trying to stimulate a patient by dragging huge amounts of blood out of one arm, uh, 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 losing quite a lot of it, and then injecting a little bit back. It does not help. If spending really helped um, uh, uh, economic growth, then the 20th century would be, the history would be entirely different. What about uh, the concept of, of a balanced budget? Uh, we get something like £589 billion pounds in revenues. Uh, that's, of course, tax revenues less than expenditure. If we got it down to that, if we simply had a balanced budget, would that do for you? It wouldn't do for me. I think we need to reshape Britain. I think the public sector is far too huge. I think the idea that half of our economy is devoted to the public sector is, is, is lunacy, is absolute lunacy. You look at the... I mean, open the jobs pages and you see the kind of nonsense which uh, the public sector is these days. And the idea that that's good for anyone, I think, is, is, is ludicrous. Martin Durkin, many thanks for coming in. Thank you.